because those, the, the main objective is find out where these people are in the process. And then the second objective, once you find out where they are in the process is keeping them in your site so that they're not off Googling and dropping into your competitor site. Because I'm a firm believer that the one that has the conversation is ahead of the competition because you know exactly what has to happen for them to need your services. If like Crystal said, you're finding out their timeline. And when I'm talking to people, I like to ask them, what, when can I follow up with you? What are your future plans? What does this look like in the future? And they'll tell you. And I've even had people, well, why don't I check in with you in like April? And she's like, why don't you check in with me in February? Okay. And it's really amazing when you just ask that question, when would you like me to check in with you? What makes the most sense for, because all we want to do is just be a resource for you. And we want to have that opportunity to earn your business. So tell me how I can be convenient for you to be able to earn your business. And that makes the follow-up 20 times easier because now there's a, there's the expectation set. So when I'm in making my Apple phone calls, so to speak, now y'all are going to go shopping and think Apple is totally differently now, but your, your brand new leads, your leads that have registered the last 14 days, and then the filter that you were talking about, the ones that are actively engaged within the last 30 days. But if you're consistently working your dashboard and you have a reasonable amount of leads coming in, which one agent shouldn't have any more than about 50 leads per agent. If you have that flow and you're taking care of the new leads that are coming in, you really need to spend 15, 20 minutes a day in your dashboard on the new leads. So you're always going to have them caught up. So now we can get into the nitty gritties and like I, I like to call it the extra credit. So if you're only spending 15 minutes on all the new leads, you, you want to make sure that you're taking care of your reminders. So your reminders are another aisle in the grocery store. So you have your newer leads, you have your reminders, and then you have your leads that you're filtering out based on, I want to monitor your activity because I know you're going to be buying with, with next year-ish, but I've confirmed your email address you want to receive updates. I've got your updates set. I just want to make sure that you continue to open up those emails that we're sending you. Because if six months goes by and they haven't heard anything from you and you go to check back with it in, in with them in six months, they're going to be like, Dion, who? Oh yeah, we talked six months ago. And they're going to lie and say, oh yeah, I remember. And they don't, they're just being nice. <laughs> so... We always yeah. want to make sure that we're working the different sections of our database, depending on what our objective is that day and what's on our docket. Because the busier we are, the less time we're going to have for that intentional follow-up. So we have to choose that day. And I love to catch up in my database when I would have appointments cancel. Because we all know that happens, right? <laughs> don't show up appointments cancel so what do you do you're like woohoo I'm off for the night they canceled I'm gonna go have a beer or do you sit down and go okay I'm gonna make use of this time and I'm gonna get more business so I was gonna be with this lead for an hour so I'm gonna sit down on my dashboard for an hour and that's where you can really dig in because yes you are right Dion as a lead comes in, if they registered 30 days ago and they have never looked at another property and they become what I call inactive, they're not as high on your priority list. That doesn't mean completely ignore them if you have the time. Just because they didn't log back in or look, everything pretty much goes to spam anymore. And I get a lot of, once you confirm people's emails, They'll say, oh, let me give you a better email that I check often. Because so many people are putting their spam emails. Dion, do you have a separate email just for your like store receipts and for your store coupons? I actually don't, no. I do, yes, you're right, I do. Yeah, so people are putting those emails that they never check. I only check mm -hmm. that email whenever I want a damn coupon. <laughs> I'm like, <"Ooh, laughs> I'm going to Bed Bath & Beyond. I need my 20% coupon or, or Bath & yeah, Bed Bath & Beyond, yeah. I need my 20%, right? So they're only going to go to that email if they want to look at properties, but it's way easier to Google. It's way easier to just go to Google and land in somebody else's dashboard. 
and then they wonder why they get 20 million phone calls. So we, we can't. You. That was like a really good answer. It's exactly what I wanted to, to hear. So thank you. You're so welcome. Yeah, just diversify. Mm -hmm. Know who your priorities are. And obviously the people that are inactive, the busier you are, the less you're gonna be contacting them. And that's where I like to just mass message those. Like, hey, you've been inactive, you haven't been looking. And just try to get some information from them. I got my other computer going so I can have a camera. I can actually see you. <laughs> <laughs> Except for I look orange because the silly light is like so bright. There we go. <laughs> That's okay. Like, yeah. you know, uh, do you have questions? Yeah, there is. So let's just see here. I move my mouse over. Um, so Adam is asking, I only have done dialer once and how do you counter the initial resistance? Oh, whenever they're like, I don't want to talk to you. <laughs> is that what you're referring to Adnan? Yes, yeah. So A, I've learned very quickly to lessen my opening because yeah how did you get my number and i'll tell you what man i've been calling california and everybody's freaking paranoid in california i swear to god They're like who is this <laughs> <laughs> and you know i just laugh with them because whenever we get that like who is this say oh this is beverly i see that you were looking at homes and da 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 and i'm just checking in oh how did you get my number? Well, were you on Google? So always know your lead source when you're making your phone calls. When you know your lead source, you can just direct them to, oh, you must've been looking at homes. I had, I actually had one this morning. Oh my Lord Jesus, it was so funny. So I didn't have a name. It was just like TT, it was his email address, like TT112277 or something like that. And they were imported from another dashboard. So the notes are all, you know, convoluted. So I'm like scrolling down to the bottom while the phone's ringing. And I see, I see he's a seller lead that he requested a home evaluation. Um, I don't know. It was like three months ago, no other notes. It doesn't look like they've, they've ever been called. So he answers the phone. I said, Hey, this is Beverly. I said, I'm really shooting in the dark here. I don't have your name, but it looks like a few months ago, you were interested in receiving a value on, uh, on a home. He's like, no, I said, well, does this email address sound familiar to you? He goes, that's mine. I said, well, here's, here's the, the home address. And he said, who are you? I said, I'm Beverly. I work with Keith. He goes, well, he's my realtor. And I'm like, okay. I said, well, I said, I'm just going through notes here. And I said, you may be in his system twice. I don't know. So he was very like defensive. Like, why are you calling me? He ended up hanging up on me. And then whenever I tagged my agent in the note, he sent me back, he said, he's a wackadoo. Like, and we can't take things personally on what people are doing on the other end. So all we can do is just be our like friendly, bubbly selves and just do our job. Just go in. And so just keep it short and sweet and to the point and take them right to exactly how they got there. And that, that truth will be revealed or they'll say, oh, you know, I was just messing around. Say, that's fine. I just want to know. I just want to know who's messing around in my back end. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. So that was that question. Uh, we do have Anita. Is, she's really finding it difficult to follow up because she took a long break. What should I say to restart the conversation now? Anita, I was just checking in. Gosh, <clears throat> it's, been so, it's, it's been a while since we spoke. I just want to kind of know where, where are you right now in the process? What's going on? And they'll tell you, you know, and that, that's really what it is. Just mm -hmm. be straight with why you're calling and they will appreciate it. So don't, don't find it weird. And, and I, trust me, I look at the notes and everything within me says, don't call it, don't call it, don't call it. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> why not? because you don't know what you're going to get on the other end. And I'm like, all right, well, if they hang up, they hang up. And I've been doing a lot of cleaning up these last couple of months and the dashboards that I just took on. 
And literally I'm calling leads that are three, four years old that have not been touched in three or four years. And you do, you get that feeling like, oh, okay, oh, there's 25 in the dialer. Let's just keep going. This <laughs> I will promise you, you've got to kiss a lot of frogs to get the prince, but you will get a prince. And you're like, yes, it was worth it. It was worth it. I took 99 for the team, but that one was worth it because it was a slam dunk appointment. So we just have to realize that we do get closer to the yes once we go through the nose. And we just have to flip our brain and go, whoo, I'm glad I'm not that person. I'm glad I don't live in that person's house. <laughs> oh, it sucks to be them. And you cannot take it personally. Just whatever you got to do, hang up that phone and just go, ah, just shake it all up. Just do something mm -hmm. to shake off that bad energy and just keep going. Because it's not fun. Uh, I'm not going to sit here and lie and go, oh, it's all wine and roses. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, oh God, I got like 50 of these. <laughs> All right. So Chris here is asking, how do we get go from a nice hello to an actual appointment? How hard do you push? I don't push at all because we cannot change people's situations. All I'm looking for is where are you in the process and how can we help you? Because my objective is we want to earn your business. So when we start with that nice hello, well, you're looking, so what is your situation right now? What would have to happen to make a move? Well, you know, my kids have to get out of school or we have all these like myriad of excuses and you know, well, when would be a good time for me to check back in with you? Well, first I'm getting a lot of first a year, a lot of first a year right now. Just, I mean, we, well, especially here in the States, we have this freaking stupid ass election going on that we still don't know mm -hmm. what the hell's going on. It's just <laughs> a never ending election. <laughs> I'm ready to move to Iceland. I don't know. I'm going to go somewhere. Um, and, you know, COVID, it, it's, it's really, this year has just turned people upside down and they're like, all right, just let me get through this year and let's just talk about next year. And I, I, I really feel that we're reluctant to ask that question because we know we're not gonna follow up. <laughs> we don't wanna know when we can follow up because we know we're not gonna do it, but we have to change that mindset shift because here's the thing, folks, that's your freaking pipeline. And as I'm making these phone calls, yeah, I may not be sending my agent go out there right now, they're ready to look at a home, but what I am sending them is, hey, can you follow up with them in March? Because this, this is why. So just dig a little bit deeper and just ask. And you don't be afraid to ask if there was a home that came on the market earlier than that, would it be something of interest to you? And if it's just a flat out no, you can't make them move. So just be respectful with where they are in the process and make sure you do follow up with them. And please remember this question. This is one of the most important questions on when to follow up with people that we all forget to ask. When do you want to be in a home? So when they say, ah, follow up with me in March, would you like to be in a home in March or would you like to start looking in March? Because that's going to change the game. And then that's where we get pissed off and we call them in March and they're like, oh, I already purchased. I'm like, oops, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. So make sure you ask that golden question. When would you like to be in your home? Then you gauge when you want to follow up with them. <laughs> Perfect. Do we have anyone else that has any situations or examples of follow up calls that they may have done that they need a little further direction on? And while you're waiting on that, I'll just, mm -hmm. I'll just start talking. In regards to when I pull a list up of people that are they're in the make contact situation, and I'm looking through the notes, it is much easier to pull your list. And when you have your list pulled up and you open up the name and you're clicking through, because your, your dialer pauses, right? You, you can look at this one and determine what's going on. The best tip that I can give you for moving forward when you're making your notes right now 
is utilize the hell out of that. What, what is it called? Lead summary. Let me see exactly what it's called. Lead description mm -hmm. on the left side of, so when you're doing any type of nurturing, instead of over tasking yourself with people that are a year out, but you want to monitor their activity. So let's just say, for example, you're having conversations and they may be in a relocation situation where they may be looking at two different areas. They may be in a situation that their kids, they're, they're waiting for their kids to go to school or they're waiting to see if their kids are going to get accepted to a certain college or we, we never know, right? That there's always those myriad of reasons that we had a great conversation, but we, we really don't, they, they don't deserve time on our calendar yet. So if we tag them as monitor activity, because we want to watch if they're getting the emails and getting the updates, because we've taken the time to do that. So let's say we have a group of 75 leads that we're monitoring. If you leave a basic note in that lead description, you don't have to funnel through all the notes, all the text, all the phone calls to figure out where to target because you want to be efficient. You want to get them and get in and get out. So if you put the most important note in the lead description to the sum of they are, um, I'm just trying to think of one that's just happened. They have to wait, oh, so this is a good one. He has to wait on getting his pre-approval because he had the same name as his father and his father filed bankruptcy and it got attached to his credit report. <laughs> oh. He has an attorney working on his credit right now. He said, my credit should be fine. I go, thanks dad. He's like, yeah, right, really? So just have fun with your leads, right? Because they're going to go with you. So I said, when do you think would be a good time for me to follow back up with you? He said, well, the attorney said that they would get back to me on this date. So probably right around this time, right? Mm -hmm. So what I did is I did monitor activity. I did put a reminder on there. And I also in the lead description, because that way, when you're looking at the dashboard, you have the reminder on there to be able to look at when you want to follow up with him because you can just hover over it and see your reminder date. Or if you have the leads opened, you can look right at that lead description and go, oh, I just need to follow up with him on February 1st, 2021. And then you just keep clicking through. You don't have to take five, 10 minutes to read notes. That's probably my biggest tip is use the lead description and work your leads by the groups when you're following up. Did that raise any questions? I'm not directly related to that. Um, no, okay. I do have a couple of questions though. So, um, so Jason is asking for new agents, how many leads should we be getting a month in order to close a deal month? So, uh, what well, is this number crystal. <laughs> so, the average number? conversion rate on online leads is one to two percent, generally speaking. Now, that's weighed heavily on you as the agent. These leads are not going to convert themselves. So, with that being said, every 100 leads, you should have a deal in there. So, if you're looking to close a deal a month, essentially, you would be wanting to receive 100 leads a month is kind of what your your goal is now you will sometimes get a lead you might have just started and three weeks in you get a lead that's all hot and ready they're, they're all prepared you're out you go show them houses boom bang you're done you know that does happen but often enough it's it's cultivating these leads to get to the point of conversion because a lot of them are just in that research phase you know that the initial glimpse or idea or thought of you know perhaps making that move that they're online looking, right? So it's, we call the ones that are ready to transact right away. Those are your unicorns, 100%. Um, we all would want those leads, right? And they're few and far between because they register and they're often being nurtured. And in some cases, as Beverly says, you know, four to eight dashboards sometimes because they've registered over the course of three to four years or one day they just go registration happy because one site didn't give them what they needed so they went to another site went to another site um, it's really who's going to follow up with that lead that's going to get the, the business and most people don't follow up with their leads 
so that's the only thing that you have to do to be better than competition is follow up with your leads. And I'm going to piggyback on that when you're talking conversion rates of the one to 2%, because in my opinion, that conversion rate changes the longer you have your dashboard and the longer you're nurturing your leads, Mm -hmm. because it's so it's, it's kind of like numbers can be so easily manipulated to 5% conversion rate because where do your leads come from? How are they generated? But when you really look at the totality of working a dashboard and the, when we were talking with Dion and the multiple facets that you have of the new leads coming in, of the leads that are inactive, of the leads that you've spoke to, if you're really working your dashboard the way it's meant to be worked, you should have an increase on that, but it's almost impossible to know what your conversion rates are because a lead that comes in today may close in three months or it may close in three or five years. So how do we really know what our conversion ratios truly are unless you're taking your entire database and saying, I have 10,000 leads and I've closed 100 or whatever the numbers are. I'm just throwing numbers out there. But there's really no way because do you take that 1%? Do you account for the people that came in with the wrong email and a wrong phone number? Do you count those? Do you count the ones that have a bad phone number that most agents trash? So which leads are you counting against your one to 2%? That's one to 2% of only the people that you've gotten a hold of. And most people are only making one freaking phone call. So one to 2% is an average way of working the database. Mm -hmm. But if you work it the way it's meant to be worked, that one to 2% is going to have a compound effect over time because of the nurturing and it's just building a pipeline. And when you have a pipeline built right now, my, this California, the Sacramento um, site that I'm working, he has not had any phone calls happen in his site for one full year. He has been completely 100% dependent on artificial intelligence. I can tell you two things, tons of unsubscribes, which they're not even getting email updates right now. So when they unsubscribe, it really changes the game. But what's happening, the phone calls, I'm getting an incredible amount of people picking up because they've never been called. And I have his pipeline so stacked for February, March, and April right now that I'm like, dude, you are going to be killing it in February, March, and April. But we have to shift that mindset. What we do in real estate right now is where we're going to be in 60 to 90 days. So if you don't have business today, you're not going to sit down and get business today. You're going to get business in 60 to 90 days. So when you sit down to work, you have to say, okay, I really need to have a bang up February. So I got to work today. I got to work my database and I got to build that pipeline. And that's, what's going to increase. So I'm a proponent on less is more. I have a a site right now. They have 200 leads a month coming in. And there's basically three agents in there working it and one's part-time and one is on like a referral because he doesn't want the agent in there anymore. 200 freaking leads a month that I'm trying to call and manage. They cannot keep up because the conversations I'm having, I have to basically back off and then I have to go back in and say, Hey, don't forget to follow up with so-and-so don't forget to follow up with so-and-so because they're dropping the ball. So only, you know, how often you're gonna be working. And I'm, I'm gonna say, I'm not gonna disagree with Crystal, but what I'm gonna say is less is more if you're going to work your database properly. And it's, it's, it's a good thing to front load in the beginning. Take a hundred in the beginning, because if you're just starting it, you need to get a surplus so mm-hmm. that you can get to that point of the follow-up and the nurture. And then back it down a little bit so you can make sure that you're taking care of everybody and not dropping the ball. Yeah, too many leads. And if you have too many people not working those leads, I was just helping clients earlier and they're about 600 leads a month. (laughs) And no one's making their calls. Like they're making calls as if they're getting 30 leads a month. 
Like you guys got to pick up the phone. Oh, they're yeah. they were contemplating, you know, maybe we need more leads. I'm like, no, you do not need more leads. You need to pick up the pieces of what you're dropping here before you start throwing any more money in here. You got to connect us. I, I want that dashboard. It's a it's a ton ton. Oh, you do. Yeah. Actually, I, I might actually because he's looking for someone. I might actually because his team is just definitely they're they're dropping the ball. Um, and and the two agents that are doing it you know, more so they're too busy to do it to the extent that it needs. So how many to be. agents for that many leads? Four. <sighs> Four. Yeah. There's supposed to be more, but everyone else isn't doing it because they feel like their leads coming from wherever else are better qualified. <laughs> um, I think there is more to that story, but yeah. He's, they're, they're in the, the process right now of cleanup. I so said, you guys are hammering out. You've got a lot of calls to make. You need to either hire someone to do this for you, whether you outsource it or have someone in-house to do it for you. Um, but yeah, you got to spend at least an hour a day right now for the next three weeks, each of you, to get caught up in any way, shape, or form. Oh, hell, with that um, many leads, it's even more than that. Yeah. Like, I'm like, but that's like, I'm like, your bare minimum needs to be. Because I'm like, when I look at their call results, what they're achieving in seven days is what they should be accomplishing at bare minimum in a day, not yeah. over seven days kind of thing. Yeah. So. And that's the thing. I mean, it's, it's literally about the consistency. Mm -hmm. And I was talking to one of my clients today, and I was actually on the dialer calling while I was on the phone with him. He's like, oh, hang on, I got a call back because I cannot believe how many callbacks you get. Every one mm -hmm. of my clients, when I'm in their site, they know when I'm in the site because their phone's ringing. And folks, that's what it's all about. It mm -hmm. only takes 23 seconds to get your phone to ring. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's the beauty of it. Cue up 25, 23 seconds, whoever doesn't answer the phone, I promise you, you will get a call back. I promise you will get a call back. Mm -hmm. And don't flub it up. Just, they're just going to say, I just missed a call from you, or you just tried to call me. Oh, yeah, you must be. Don't, don't go. Who are you? What? No, I don't think I called you. I don't have a, I don't, I don't have a call on my phone. Come on now. If they say they missed a call and you have someone making your phone calls. It's such a leak calling you back. <laughs> ah, beautiful. It's beautiful. Uh, yeah. And so we have uh, Natasha here saying she's completely new to this and then she's excited and anxious to start getting leads. So far, her experience with online leads has not led to anybody that is serious with buying or selling. Um, what would you say to that? Um, the Beverly? numbers thing. Mm -hmm. People like to look at homes. And, you know, the, the reality is, like I said before, you got to kiss a lot of frogs, get to the prince. And mm -hmm. we can't ever make anybody make a move. All we can do is find out where they are in the process and my, my big thing, and I think we talked about on the last webinar that I've kind of changed up to from what's your situation to what are your future plans? Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I had one lady today, she's been online looking for like 1300 days. And I said, I'm just checking in, like, where are you in the process at this point in the game? And she goes, honey, I'm just looking. I just like to look. And I said, when could we realistically follow up with you? When would you like to make something happen? And she's like, 10 years, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it's it, when you get that real with people, they're not lying to you. Mm -hmm. like you really don't have intentions and, you know, just look at it as you are branding yourself and your job is to let everybody know that you are open to sell real estate and you just never know where a conversation is going to go or where it's going to lead to or who they know. And, you know, you just have to have fun with it and enjoy the process and, and appreciate the conversations for what they are. And, you know, I, I talked to a lady the other day and she's basically homeless. Um, she was abused. She's out with her children. She needs to find a rental. My clients don't specialize in rentals. Um, I couldn't do anything for her, but just listen, you know, mm -hmm. and I just encouraged her and I said, you know, everything happens for a reason and things are going to work out. Things are going to be okay. And by the time we were done with the phone call, she said, I just, I appreciate you calling me so much. I, I know that you can't, I'm like, I'm getting teared up just because it was such an emotional phone call. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's, you never know whose life you're going to touch. You just never know. 
Mm-hmm. Who, who needs a smile that day? And just like that lady, whenever this came on, you mm-hmm. heard her say, she goes, this is emotional for me to talk about. Mm-hmm. And, but that phone call happened for a purpose. And you just don't know what that's going to mean to her life moving forward, having that phone call today. So don't look at it like, oh, I need to go show homes or I need to put something mm-hmm. in my car. Or I need to put a sign in somebody's yard. This is very, very relational and you're affecting people's lives in a big way. So it's, you know, just be patient and just ask them, you know, well, you know, you may just be looking now, but you know, future plans, one mm-hmm. year, two year, five years, just, just get a time front. A time and, and that kind of leads into when, you know, they weren't very serious. It, if I had to guess, they're all giving you the, I'm just looking. Mm-hmm. We're just browsing. So it's really learning how to handle that objection to dig deeper, to determine what that comment actually means specifically for that person in their situation. So, because the I'm just looking could mean a magnitude uh, of different things. Yeah. <laughs> so, that, it's, that, I guess so. Yeah. So, when, when can I follow up with you? When would you like to be in a home? Oh, December. I'm like, uh, this is like October. And I'm like, uh, oh, oh, okay. So you're just looking now that you, okay. All right. So what does mm-hmm. this process look like for you? <laughs> because they don't no. know. No. You know, they want to start looking in December. I'm mm-hmm. not looking right now. I'm going to be looking in December. So looking to them means physically looking in homes, not physically looking online. So mm-hmm. make sure that you're very clear on your language. And that's why I said that golden line is when would you like to be in a home? because that answers all the questions, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, well now I know where I need to start with pre-approval. Now I need to know, now I know where we need to start with looking. So the biggest thing is finding out what their absolute situation is right now, because that's gonna help gauge the urgency. Are you in a rental? Do you own a home? Are you living with family? And I'm getting a lot more living with family. So I added that to my queue. I used to just say, do you Mm -hmm. rent or do you own? So -hmm. now I'm like, do you rent? Do you own or are you living with family? And they're like, I rent. Okay, so are you in a month to month or are you in a lease term? Because month to month, the the timing's up to them, right? Mm -hmm. But at lease term, okay, do you wanna be out by the time your lease term ends? Do you have the option of going month to month after your lease term ends? Because that's really closing in that gap because Mm -hmm. if they say yes, it kind of takes the urgency off the timeline. But if they say, no, I have to be out because they're, they're raising my rent to, to a ridiculous amount. You, you now have their pain. Mm-hmm. You, now know, you now know what has to happen. So yeah, when they say just looking, say, that's great. So, you know, what, when, when would you like to be in a home? And that, they'll give you the truth. We're just asking, when can I follow up with you? And don't be afraid to ask those questions. Because you didn't have the deal in the first place. So you're not. No. Really and the more calls you make and the more conversations, the more comfortable you're going to get having those conversations. Well, it, it, and it, it's tough, Crystal, right? It's like when you, it's like, I got 20 leads. Yeah. Ooh, right? Like, you don't want to mess it up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Until you have like, you know, 2,000 in there and you're just like, oh, another one gone, another one gone, another one gone. It's, it's, yeah. It's yeah. a little different when you have a magnitude versus a, a small amount of leads and you're like, I got to focus and hone in on these, yep. these leads here. So, um, <clears throat> so we got a question from Daria here. How do I follow up with leads that want to look for properties, but do not want to get pre-approved yet? Oh, darn people. Why do they want to put the cart before the horse? I don't understand. Mm. The only reason they want to go that route is they don't know. So it's our job to educate them. And I, I like to do the roundabout way because I don't like to tell them that we gotta get pre-approved. I'm just not gonna take you out. I hear it all the time. Well, if you're not pre-approved, I can't work with you. So mm-hmm. don't take that approach. Just ask them, say, here's what I wanna make sure of. What are you comfortable paying a month in a mortgage? And let them tell you. And say, my job is to protect that because I do not in any way, shape or form want to compromise and upsell you. So I want to make sure that we're looking at the right price range of homes for you. And depending on the county that we're looking in, depending on the province, I don't know if this pertains in Canada, but 
taxes are different in different locations. Mm -hmm. So that can make a difference in their monthly mortgage payment. The HOAs can make a difference in their monthly mortgage payment on what they get approved for if they're looking for something with an HOA. And if they're renting, they're not used to the insurance being in their, in their payment. So for, for all of our sakes, can you talk to somebody just so we know that we're looking in the right price range? Because the worst thing that could happen is I take you to look at a home, you fall in love with it, and then and then we go in reverse order and you realize that it's just a little over your budget, you're not comfortable with it. Because what happens then is that we've now set a bar. You now have seen a home that you love and every other home's gonna look like poo poo. And that's the last thing I wanna do. I just wanna make sure my job is to protect your money and your investment. All day long, they will if they will not talk to a lender, they have bad credit and they're not telling you something, I promise you. Mm -hmm. There's gotta be a reason why they wouldn't, like who wouldn't? <laughs> like, yeah. wouldn't you wanna know what you can afford if you're actually seriously going to look at a house? Yes. Um, and then, and then I, I pull the card on them all the time, you know, just, just like the bank, use my stories, I don't care. It doesn't matter whose stories they are, they're real stories. Mm -hmm. You know, this guy, he literally started looking at a home last month, went and got pre-approved. Well, he, he wanted to look at homes last month. He went and got pre-approved and realized his dad's bankruptcy is on his credit report. Yeah. Who would have thought? He never expected that. Mm -hmm. So you never know what's going to be on. Now, sometimes I get, well, you know, I'm on credit card and I watch my credit all the time. Mm -hmm. Okay, That's awesome. That's great. But let's really lock down the, the, the realistic price range. Yeah. Because I really <laughs> don't. And I, I just want to make sure you're prepared because especially in today's market with multiple offers and so many people, you know, the, the, the price is escalating. You want to make sure that they're prepared because your job is not only there to show them a home, your job is there to get them in the door and in the running for a home. So and the lending rules just change so frequently, right? Like it's, it's, they, they're always swaying, um, mortgage websites, people go on them and try to fill it out. Well, the mortgage they, they, I find they, in my personal experience, when I was doing it, it actually underqualified me. So I could actually afford more than what that site actually said. Mm. And my mortgage payments were less than what it was saying. Like it, so it's like, it, 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 it's kind of like a reference point, but it's not something to use as your actual it's tool, it's a right? Yeah, so it's, it, 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 and it does vary. And, you know, they can get locked in at today's interest rate. If the interest rates are low, why wouldn't you want to lock mm. yourself in in case all of a sudden it went whoop, back up again, mm -hmm. right? So- and that, that's really, you know, that, that's my way of qualifying a lead. If they will not get pre-approved before we go see a property, mm -hmm. there, there's a reason being. And just, it, I flat out ask them, is there something that, you know, you may be thinking with your credit? Is, is there something there that you may not be aware of? And they'll go, well, yeah, I have a student loan. <laughs> and, mm -hmm. and you do, have, and you can use the COVID, like everybody else is using COVID as an excuse. Why not, well, why not mm -hmm. we use it? You know, yeah. COVID has changed the game um, for um, loan conditions. And I, I just want to make sure that all of our ducks are in a row because I don't want to put you in a situation and get you under contract and then find out things have changed. So just when I, even in like Canada, it's like there's so many, they have stress tests. They just tweaked it a bit. I think they've lowered the interest rate on stress tests. I don't know. Do you do stress tests in the States? Okay, so in your pre-approval, they pre-approve you at a much higher interest rate. So should interest rates rise, you can still afford your mortgage payments. Um, and I have, you know, I was speaking to somebody and they were actually moving from Vancouver from, you know, a million dollar home, moving into my area at a, into a substantially less home. They had a ton of equity and they almost didn't get pre-approved or the approval because of all the new mortgage rules like they were so stressed out thinking like we've got all this down payment all this we got blah blah blah, blah and they almost like had to like back up the deal and they'd already sold their house down the coast and yeah it's it's you know it's always you know best to do that because you just you can't assume these days there's so many different things you can't you can't so if you're always you. putting it back on them uh, that, mm -hmm. that you're protecting them they'll appreciate that. And it's just a different mm -hmm. perspective than just trying to get them to just get to a lender. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so and then this is, is it's hard to say, but it's so he's asking how many calls a person should target to get the conversation to no, sorry, to get the conversion in 60 to 90 days. Like how many per day should he commit to calling? Beautiful question. So in the yeah. first 14 days, six to eight attempts and mm -hmm. keeping those attempts at different times of the day. I have a spreadsheet that I keep that every time I log into a client's dashboard, I put the date and I put the timestamp mm -hmm. and then I put what filter I dialed. So when I log back in, I can go, oh, well, I'm not going to call that filter. I'll wait until later this afternoon to call that filter as I called it yesterday morning. So if I log in at the same time, I purposely don't call that filter and I'll call it at a different time in the day. So that way, the people that are in your, it's my second priority filter that, that leads it registered the last 14 days that have a valid or unknown phone number. And I'm, I just, whoop. And if you're consistent with it, you pretty much you'll get a whole, I don't, I don't even know what the percentage is, but in those six to eight attempts, and then the next floor that they go to, they get about two more. Mm -hmm. So they're getting anywhere from eight to 10 attempts um, in that first 30 days. And if you think about it, everybody else is doing one. So if you do anything more than one, you're, you're better than your competition. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And if anyone has had any kind of training from our team, like Adnan, if you have safe filters, that would be your second safe filter, where it's you're calling the lead every other day, right? So um, it's just going in at a different time of day. Um, we don't have the 14 days on there because reality is y'all aren't calling your leads every single day. So <laughs> Um, if we put that on there, it would just not work out for you. Um, so that is there. So it's just basically, you know, their pipeline indicates that you haven't made contact. They've got a valid phone number um, and you haven't talked to them in the last two days and you have seven or less calls on them, basically. So once they hit that eighth call attempt, they fall off that list. But it's just clearing Ooh, out your list. Just clear out your number go. one, clear out your number two, and keep that make cycle it going. Like Candy Crush, make it yeah. a game. Yeah. Make it a game. That's why I said if I can make lead calling like Candy Crush, I love, I love having a list of mm -hmm. like 300 and taking it, chunking it by 25 at a time, 25 at a time. I'm like, okay, I'm at 300. I dubbed 25 and I was able to define five or bad phone number and I had five conversations. So now I'm down to like 290. Mm hmm. And it's it's fun, so you just have to. I, I think it's know. a different kind. You probably play like uh, little mind games too, right? Do you okay. play like? Are you? Yeah, I love. Well, I, it's, it's I think we're crush. a certain type of Beverly. Like I used to do typing <laughs> games too, where it'd be like, okay, let's how fast I can do it this time. And I have a very <laughs> everyone asks how I can. How I can it is do. like when, when I get twenty five in my queue, I'm like, I don't care what it was. That that was my last lead that before I got on this phone. I'm like five to two, I got it. Yeah. I got it. Like, <laughs> I can't leave a call filter. Like I cannot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's rewarding. Like reality is like, um, I was helping a friend of mine just with some of his stuff. And I, I think it's been 25 minutes in there, tackled 25 to 30 calls and spoke to three people on his behalf. Right. And that knocked his list. Cause he's just in a really bad situation right now. So I'm like, let me help you out a little bit. Um, so it, it can, and it, it is rewarding when you're seeing those numbers drop, you're like, yes, I'm really helping them out here. Just by, you know, tackling some of those calls. A lot of them aren't answering, but that's okay. At least the calls are happening and they're coming from his number. So if they call back, they're going to get him, you know, things like that. So, um, yeah, it's just plug yeah, away. Even if no one answers, it's still forward progress because it's one more time that your phone number showed up on their phone. And I still yeah. say people suffer from FOMO. I mean, they're like, who's who keeps calling me? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, let me, I just have one question here from Jason who's asking where the live dials are. I'm just going to send you that link here. You can look for live dials kind of by topic. So we have little snippets of conversations or mindset, different things like that. And then there's also the live webinars, um, the live dialing webinars, and we save them all. They're all broken down by month. So you can sit there and watch them all. You can also find them on YouTube as well on the Agent Locator channel. So those are, that is that. So I think that's Beautiful. it. Yeah. Good stuff. Perfect. 
Awesome. So yeah, if anyone wants to, so the only thing with the, the lead qualifying and calling on Beverly is we need to have some leads in your dashboard that she can call um, in there. Sometimes I get people on my list and I look and they've got like 10 leads in their system. I'm like, well, this, <laughs> this doesn't really work. Um, so we do want to have those in there and then just making sure that you're actually logging your information and using the system so Beverly's not recalling a lead that you've already talked to and then that makes the both look a little silly when that happens I called um, someone's mother-in-law the other day yeah and, and she, I'm like hey I saw your line look it it's been like two years since anybody talked to her well not yeah. really but yeah and then I asked my agent I'm like who's so and so she says my mother-in-law don't call her and I'm like oh, too late <laughs> too late too late well that's the same with this guy <laughs> calling his leads and he didn't properly filter like tag and pipeline and all this stuff is and it was a client of his that he's closing you know in like 10 days from now or something so I'm calling him and all of a sudden I look and I'm like oh, crap this is this is a client it's closing and so I'm talking to him and it's like it's just a congratulations call I just want to see that you're closing and you know it's just like on the spot changing this yep. is why so that I didn't seem like I'm a weirdo just randomly calling about his home search when he's, when he's clearly already made the purchase. So. Yeah, yeah, but uh, anywho, well, thanks everyone for joining. Uh, you guys can email if you want to get on the list. I basically go all through, see who's available on the, the day closer to. Um, trying to not get the last minute cancellations because sometimes that that happens. So I try to book it the same week. So typically I start calling on Mondays or Tuesdays to schedule you guys in. So we know who's for sure going to be available during that time slot, but you can email me. It's just crystal, um, like the, like the gem at agentlocator.ca. Crystal like the gem. I like crystal it. like the gem. Well, there's so many different spellings and people put an H or K and oh. like, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's just the original spelling. Oh. Um, thanks everyone. I'll see you in a couple of weeks. Yeah. See you in a couple of weeks. Bye. Bye.